There are thousands of asteroids out there on the outer space. Many of them cross the Earth's orbit, and quite often, small asteroids impact the Earth, disintegrating and blowing up in our atmosphere. However, on rare occasions, some of them make it to the surface, and depending on the size, can cause catastrophic damage, as with the dinosaurs. Luckily, we can prevent that, because asteroid impacts are the only natural disasters we can prevent. But we are not yet there. To deal with such threats, a lot of prerequisites need to be prepared, and that is exactly what the NeoShield 2 project is working on. The NeoShield 2 project, for example, is actively preparing to protect the Earth from hazardous near Earth objects and the next major impact. It is funded by the European Union as part of the Horizon 2020 program, and the project team is composed by 11 partners spread all over Europe and under coordination of Airbus in the south of Germany. In NeoShield 2, a team of four European industries works on the design, development and verification of three different spacecraft GNC systems. In particular, we work on an impact of spacecraft GNC design, which can hit an only 300 meter sized object with very high relative speed, just enough to change its orbit from a potential collision course with our planet. This is done at Airbus in France, Toulouse. We also work on a reconnaissance spacecraft GNC system, which enables us to do close proximity operations at asteroids. This is important for lander deployment and to observe the asteroid in detail. The information from such a spacecraft is also needed by the, or can be used by the impact of spacecraft. This development is done at Deimos in Madrid, Spain. We also work on the GNC design of a sample and return spacecraft. This allows a spacecraft to autonomously land on the surface of an asteroid, take a sample and go up again. This is developed and verified at GMV in Madrid, in Spain. At Fraunhofer EMI, we have developed the DMAN, a device for material extraction from near-Earth objects. And it works like this. The DMAN is carried on board a lander and placed on the asteroid surface by a robotic arm. The sampling process starts with fluidizing the loose upper layers of the asteroid. The material is blown inside the device by this lateral nozzle here. Then, powder actuated bolts are fired to break up material from the now exposed solid surface. And the broken fragments are collected by a second fluidizing process. When we turn to Earth, the collected material can be characterized in the lab with much higher accuracy than by space-borne instruments. Airbus is on one hand developing together with the national agencies and the European Commission planetary defense mitigation techniques, but is also on the other hand ramping up the efforts for a deflection validation program where we try to confirm the success of the mitigation mission. The challenge of this program is to assess very quickly, but also accurate, if and how well the asteroid has been mitigated. Using the deep space communication network and in situ measurements in the vicinity of the NEO, we try to estimate the NEO orbital change. If this would be inadequate, a second impact spacecraft will be launched to further secure the Earth. Within the same program, we are developing tools to estimate the moment enhancement effect which uh, is relevant for the scientific community as it is directly linked to the geotechnical properties of the NEO. Uh, we performed a lot of new observations and we analyzed a quite large bunch of data uh, about the small near Earth asteroids. And we used different techniques from uh, photometric light tubes to uh, study the uh, rotation of our targets to uh, thermophysical modeling to derive their size and other properties to the spectroscopic observations to constrain their surface composition. And uh, uh, in total, we characterized more than 300 asteroids, including several tens of objects smaller than just uh, 100 meters. Uh, here at the DLR in Berlin, we're working on various aspects of uh, NeoShield 2. And one of them is uh, a research project in which we're investigating the physical properties of asteroids. Now, if you need to deflect an asteroid, you're going to have to exert a force on it. There's a lot of uncertainty in 
uh, as to how the asteroid will respond to that, because we know so little about asteroids. So you can imagine an asteroid that is rotating very slowly. Um, the, the sunlight or the solar energy has more time to penetrate deeper into the object. And we think this is telling us that as you go down into the asteroid, and you may only have to go down a few tens of centimeters, that the, the, the conductivity of the material, the density of the material, is increasing rapidly with depth. It means if our results and our interpretation of those results are correct, then uh, the kinetic impactor will be a much more effective technique than we assumed before, because a greater mass of material, because of the, of the chunks of rock that must exist just below the surface, will be thrown out in the backwards direction, causing a greater deflection of the asteroid in its orbit. So in fact, what we try to understand is when an artificial projectile impacts an asteroid in order to deflect it, what is the outcome of the impact as a function of the internal structure of the asteroid? And what we find is that when an asteroid is very porous, it is much harder to deflect it than if it is non-porous. We also look at the fate of the ejecta that are produced by the impact of the artificial projectile. Because this projectile, when it impacts the surface of the asteroid, will produce a crater. And from this crater, some ejecta will go out. And if we want to look at the impact with an artificial satellite, we need to know where to put this satellite so that it is protected from the ejecta that goes away. And what we find is that, in principle, when you have just a single asteroid, the ejecta goes away very rapidly because they are affected by the solar radiation pressure from the very small one. The other ones go back onto the asteroid. So in principle, if you put your satellite far enough from the asteroid, it will be protected.